Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And make sure you hit that like button. And I swear, I, it seems like I'm always looking at this injury report because look at all the guys on my team that are hurt. And then another one's added. Chris Thompson, our third down running back, our receiving back, our scat back, whatever you want to call him. He's out for four weeks now. So he's going to be out during a crucial part of our schedule going up against some tough teams. So that kind of means that Darius Geis is going to move into that full-time three-down back role and no longer going to be spelled by Chris Thompson, at least for the next four weeks. I want to see how he can handle that role before making any roster changes. But speaking of roster changes, one move I do kind of want to make here is I want to look at Pernell McPhee. So looking at Pernell McPhee, he isn't he is a pretty good rated guy he just doesn't fit with us he is a scheme fit he has uh got a lot of xp just from being in the scheme but he doesn't seem to be doing anything in the game you can see here we he did sign a one-year contract with the team and he is the 10th ranked overall left outside linebacker so he is really good i just don't think he fits with us so if i can dump him to a team that possibly would be willing to give up a draft pick for him uh, or another young player I can develop or something. I don't know what exactly I'm looking for. Maybe a cornerback I would be looking for because Fabian Morrow, he's got kind of a while to develop. He is one of the young bright spots on this in this secondary but he's got a while to go you see his man coverage is at 67 it's going to take a while to get that up to what it should be so i don't think this year will be his year starting i did want to get him some playing time but just because quinn dunbar has given up a little bit of too many big plays but i mean i think he's getting better uh we'll see going forward and then deron Payne as well he's another young guy but if i can dump mcphee for a uh, young guy uh maybe to develop in the secondary or a pick i'll take it so one position i do want to upgrade though speaking of pernell mcphee is pass rush and one thing that we haven't had many of is sacks from uh the linebackers coming in or uh the defensive ends and one guy i do want to look at here from the denver Broncos, shane ray so shane ray is kind of that guy that's playing for a contract he, he, he his contract was not picked up by the broncos and he's a guy that's kind of he's going to be an unrestricted free agent next season so he does have some nice uh attributes here you can see 80 awareness 80 play recognition 81 finesse moves that would be our highest finesse moves on the team right now with 83 speed i think he can move pretty well so maybe this is a guy me we might want to go after let me know down below because look i mean he has everything you need look at his traits he, he's a big hitter he has a swim move he has a high motor he plays the ball i mean he does everything so i think this is a good guy for us to go after especially in the pass rush looking at kyler fackrell the only reason i would like shane ray over kyler fackrell is because kyler fackrell is one year older and it seems like he's not as versatile as shane ray is and you can see he doesn't have great pass moves so pass rush move so we're going into this matchup versus the giants and you know the odell norman rivalry it's real as we hop into this game we are four and two they are one and six so we are at metlife stadium so let's hop into this action man let's get it let's go and we finally get to this game we've been circling this on the schedule odell versus norman and you know this is gonna be a heated matchup between those two as odell has been kind of low on this season doing pretty low but here we go we are underway here at metlife stadium here's alex brown on the kickoff and he's gonna bring this one back to the 22 yard line so here is alex smith starting out with the ball Hopefully this game we can cut down on the turnovers because last game, I mean, a ton of them, four total, and we just need to cut down on that as on a first and 10. Here's Alex Smith rolling out to the right and throwing to Jordan Reed there open after the playmaker. So now on a second and 11, here he is taking a sack and unblocked. Olivier Vernon gets in for the sack. So now facing a third and long here. Here's Alex Smith dropping back, but throwing the ball deep. And he's got a man, Richardson. Bruh. 
but he drops the ball and that was crucial because out comes Eli Manning and Eli Manning actually isn't having a bad year this year he's thrown nine touchdowns seven interceptions 1500 yards I mean that does just doesn't translate to losses like they've been having as here he is giving it off to his rookie here Saquon Barkley and he's not getting anything on that one but on a second and nine here he is from the shotgun here throwing to the outside and that one's almost tipped but luckily his receiver does hold on to the ball so now on a first and ten here getting it to Ingram once again I, I kind of think that Ingram is more of a I don't know I don't know because he can play receiver he's also he's classified as a tight end but he runs like a receiver I think he ran like a four or five at the combine I mean which is pretty unheard of the only guy I remember being that athletic is Vernon Davis and Vernon Davis is actually coincidentally on the Redskins right now but I mean when he came out of college he was running like a four four I mean that's the fastest time I remember from a tight end and from somebody that actually made it at least so here is Eli Manning getting close to the 10 yard line completing that pass and man they are just driving on this drive and here's Jonathan Stewart moving over from Carolina we get to see him for the first time in a Giants uniform he doesn't get anything on that but on a third and goal here here's Eli Manning having all day to throw the ball that one's actually going to be picked off but the feet cannot be dragged and bounds and the Giants do get to settle for the field goal so they drive all the way down the field on their first drive and they make this a three nothing game so here's Alex Smith from under center we've been going under center a lot more lately and it's actually been helping as more guys get open but he almost throws an interception probably should have thrown a bullet pass on that one but on a second and ten under center one more time and here he is finding Richardson his favorite target there across the middle uh, for about eight yards but on a third down here is Geis getting loose to the outside and unfortunately Geis did tear his ACL in real life what do you what do you guys think I mean should I keep should I keep it the way it is you know or should I just injure him and kind of set it into real life and see where that takes us I don't know should I align this with real life let me know down in the comments below that's going to be a question to address going forward should we keep him there or should we injure him but here is Thompson getting in for the sack on Alex Smith nobody home to block him but on a third and 22 just trying to get back in the field goal range here he is finding guys and he's going to get to the 28 yard line but it's definitely a manageable field goal and we kick the field goal with Hopkins and that one is going to be good so now it's three to three Coming towards the end of the first quarter, but here is Barkley. Can he get going on the ground? But this run defense has been tough all year as Vigil makes the tackle that time. So on a third and ten, here's uh, Manning from the shotgun and finding Odell for the first time. Norman on the tackle that time, and he does move the stick. So now here is Saquon Barkley breaking a couple tackles and getting up past the 45 yard line for a first down but a couple of plays later facing another third down and look who's open it's Sterling Shepard and you know Sterling Shepard's guy's gonna have a really big year in real life look out for him to break out in a big way as here is one more time Rodgers getting found on the outside that time usually you see Odell over there but I don't think Norman shadowing Beckham this game but on the next play, here is Beckham getting the best of Norman. And he burns Norman for the touchdown. And look, he's going to celebrate. You know he's going to do something. There he goes. I mean, this is going to be a tough matchup for Norman. Norman just doesn't have the speed that Odell has. But you know he has the toughness. He can get in his head, but not that time as Norman gets on the, as Norman gives up the big play. So now back out on offense trying to get this running game going because you know lately it's been working it's really been working guys hasn't had a big game yet but look at Alex Smith taking a big sack on that one trying to throw the ball away and that's the problem if you throw the ball right when you're getting hit there's a big chance you're gonna fumble that one and Alex Smith turns the ball over and look who's in the game Saquon Barkley getting going you know we can't hold the rookie down for long but here's gotcha, Eli Manning on the next play getting tackled by Preston Smith coming 
along the edge and he's picking up the sack. So now on a third and eight, here is another clean pocket, having all day to throw. Look at this pocket, nobody's getting to him, but he throws to the outside and Quinton Dunbar is there for the interception. And look at this, nobody's gonna catch him. He is gonna be gone. And Eli Manning is gonna Eli Manning. You know he throws interception after interception and this one's no different as we take this one to the house and we tie this game up at 10 apiece. But here is Eli Manning leading this team back out. And nice play that time by the veteran Orlando Scandra getting in for the tackle for loss. But on a third and 16, here's Eli Manning, but he's only dumping it off. And that's only a five yard gain. So they do have to punt this one away. And Alex Smith takes back over. So now on a first and 10 here from the shotgun, rolling out to the right. Nobody home. He's going to try to scramble this one. <laughs> He runs into his man, Jordan Reed, on that one, but he still picks up the first down. So on a third and seven, a couple of plays later, from the 48, throwing across the middle and finding the young man, Josh Doxson. And hopefully Doxson can get going because we're going to need him coming down the stretch, especially since you know teams are going to start to recognize Paul Richardson as a threat, and Josh Doxson is going to need to step up. But on the next play, you see we didn't get out the pocket on that one, so intentional grounding. So facing a second and 24 this time, rolling out to the right, throwing the ball deep to Doxson, but this time Landon Collins is going to come up with the interception, and he's playing center field on that one, but it's like a punt because they take over at the 11. So on a first and 10, sending the blitz with DJ Swearinger. And he's getting in for the sack. So now on a third and 18 on the three-yard line. Here's Barkley, but he can't even get back to the line of scrimmage as they have to punt this ball away. So we start out with great field position close to the 47-yard line. And on a toss play, we do pitch it to Geis. And Geis is just punishing the defenders on that one, getting a nice 15-yard gain. So now on a second and seven here, here's Geis getting another handoff. But this one is going to be for a lot shorter. But he does have 50 yards already in this game. It's a good sign. We are getting guys going so far this season. We started out slow, but it's paid off now as we pitch it out to him on the fourth and inches. We decide to go for it, and we do pick up the first down. So now inside the 10-yard line here, we have three chances to get in. Here facing a second and goal under center. Here we are trying to roll out. Look at the wide open field on the left. We saw that. Try to scramble out, but Snacks. Snacks is there for the sack. So now on a third and goal from the single back formation, we throw it, but it's going to be incomplete. So we do have to settle for a field goal as that's a nice goal line stand from the New York Giants, and that's going to be 13 to 10 going into halftime. And here we're looking at teams around the league, and you see the Eagles actually fall their first game of the season. They fall to 7-1 and one as the Jaguars are also 7-1, and one, the two best records in the NFL right now. And who knew? I mean, the Jaguars, we knew we had the, they had a great defense, but Bortles, I mean, what is, is this? This must be Madden because there's no way he's that good. So now to start the second half, here is Norman coming up with a play that time on the outside. That time covering Rodgers to start the second half. But here on a second and ten, here is here's Evan Ingram getting open. And like I said, he's a he's a tough guy to guard because he has the speed of receiver. He has the size of a tight end. It's pretty tough. So now on a first and ten, here is Beckham on the slant route. And it's hard to play man versus a team that has so many weapons on offense as Saquon Barkley gets the handoff, jumping over a defender on the ground, picking up six-yard line. So now in a few plays later, here's Barkley getting going once again, and they're continuing to pound the ball with Barkley. He's got close to 50 yards right now. So now in a second and three, now into field goal range, but we get to him. Finally, Ryan Kerrigan gets the sack, and this is what we've been waiting for. We thought he would be our leading sack getter, but it actually turns out that Deron Payne is actually leading us in sacks from the defensive tackle position. But on a third and nine, here is Norman with the great play on the outside, breaking up the pass. So the Giants do have to settle for the field goal, and they hit the long one, and that's going to be 13-13. And here we go with our... Uh, first possession of the second half, rolling out right, and here is 
who is that? I don't even know who that is. As uh, he gets up, I believe that was uh, actually Jordan Reed on that. He gets a nice gain on that. So now on a first and 10, here is Geis getting the pitch, and he's getting to the outside. He's got 65 yards rushing in this game, but on the next play, Olivier Vernon comes in unblocked, and he's got three sacks already in this game, and that one was pretty much bad blocking on that one, bad protection assignments as we do give up the sack unblocked. But on a third and 11, look at Alex Smith using his legs like he does best so here he goes inside the red zone, getting close as he gets the pass completed over the middle, and that's going to be a first down. But, but now facing a second and 10 from the 17. Here he is using his legs one more time, and he's picking up a good seven, eight yards on that one. So now facing a third and four here from the 11-yard line, throwing across the middle, and that one is going to be caught by Josh Doxson. Hopefully, like I said, I need to get him going this year. But on a second and goal here, his guy's getting to the outside. And he gets in for the touchdown. And he is doing numbers right now as he has two touchdowns already in this game. So now here comes Barkley back out on offense trying to pick up some yards. That's actually Jonathan Stewart. And he almost gets the first down. But on a third and inches here is Barkley showing that vision on the cutback. And he's getting close to the 50-yard line. So now here's Eli Manning Bruh. almost throwing a pick to Zach Brown over the middle. And that could have changed the momentum of the game as they get new life on a third and 10. Here is Eli Manning throwing the ball deep up for grabs. And that one is going to be tipped by Nicholson and Skandrick on that one. So we do force the punt. So now, can we put together a nice drive, get a good two touchdown lead going into the fourth quarter as Alex Smith completes that pass over the middle. But on a first and 10, here he is one more time, but Paul Richardson taking a huge hit on that. So now facing a second and 10 here to start the fourth quarter. Here's Alex Smith finding some running room and he's gonna take off and take a big hit. But luckily, Jamison Crowder is there to pick up that fumble as we got to get down on that. But on a third and four, a couple of plays later, here's Alex Smith settling down a little bit, making the easy throws. Just wasting the time here. Nice, easy throws. One more that time over the middle for a nice eight-yard gain. But on a second and two, here he is one more time using his legs. And this is something that we just need to do more. He's got 50 count him 50 yards rushing in this game but here on a first and 10 here he is throwing to the outside and that I'm telling you that's what it opens up it opens up those crossing patterns because the defenders are always worried about the quarterback running as now we're inside the 30 yard line so now facing a third and 13 here's Alex Smith throwing to the across the middle actually and Josh Doxson the third year guy out of TCU is going to catch that ball for eight yards, but we're going to have to settle for the field goal, but, but at least we make it a two-score lead heading into the last six minutes, last six, seven minutes of this game. So now here is Eli Manning back out on the next possession, and you can see we had him flushing on that two straight plays without getting any yards led to that, throwing the ball away on third down. So facing a fourth down, Quinton Dunbar with the nice coverage on who else? But Odell, and he comes up with the interception. So here we are just trying to run the clock out a little bit, moving the ball down the field. And here's Darius Guys probably should have stayed in bounds, but he does get the first down, keeping the drive alive. So now on a second and 13, here's Alex Smith on the play action fake. Here he is rolling out, finding an open man, Vernon Davis. But here's the problem. He's past the line, and that's going to be an illegal forward pass. So now on a third and 18, here he is from the shotgun, taking a sack from Damon Harrison. Snacks on that one, and we do have to punt this ball away. So here is Eli Manning in this offense back out with three and a half minutes left in this game. But here he is finding his receiver. And this time, Rodgers is going to make it inside the red zone to the 20-yard line. But on a first and 10, here is Jonathan Stewart, the veteran from Carolina. He's getting up inside the 10-yard line on that one. And I think Jonathan Stewart is like the perfect backup 
to Saquon Barkley. I mean, you're not losing. You're losing production, but, I mean, you're getting a guy that's smart there. But on a third Bruh. and goal, look at this catch. That is some cheese right there. The all-Madden cheese gets that tip and catch on that one. So now on a fourth and goal, here is Eli Manning having all day to throw one more time. Where is the pressure? And Odell scores his second touchdown of the game as we get the ball back with a minute and a half left up three points we need to move the sticks because they got all three timeouts left so now on a third and eight here is Alex Smith convert here and we win the game and he gets it to his favorite tight end Jordan Reed and he is going to complete that move the sticks as we end this game on the road and what a game this was from start to finish we just couldn't stop Odell he was getting open so much and Eli Manning I mean what is up with my pass rush we're not getting any pressure at all but one thing I can take away from this game it was a great all-around game 143 pass yards 120 rushing yards and it was just an all-around victory for the offense as Alex Smith turns the ball over once again for another couple turnovers but you know I, I gotta admit our running game is getting going now and it's kind of a great sighting as Paul Richardson is quiet in this game doesn't have any big plays but you know our defense it actually did okay I mean we did okay for what you know the offense that we we're going against I mean they have playmakers all over the field in Barkley Odell and Sterling Shepard, I mean, they did pretty good. And Quentin Dunbar definitely came up clutch with the two interceptions, one going for a touchdown. Without that, we maybe would have lost this game, but I'm proud of what he's doing on the outside. It's nice to see him making steps because we need to, you know, we need to tighten up our cornerback play a little bit. We're getting burnt a lot on man coverage, and it's forcing us to play a little more zone that, than we want to. So that's going to do it for this game, but you don't want to miss next week, man. It's going to be a good game going up against a great offense in Atlanta. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. This is going to be an interesting season going on the stretch. If we can continue to win games, we might be in the run for the division title. You never know. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.